what is a SOC 2 report? So basically a SOC 2 report at its core is an internal control report. It's a report that customers can provide to their vendors, can provide to regulators uh, to show them that they have a strong security internal control environment in place. It can also cover availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, and privacy controls. The purpose of the SOC 2 report is so that your customers can be rest assured that the risks of using your services are appropriately mitigated. Why is a SOC 2 report important? The number one reason is that your customers, prior to using your services, are going to want to make sure that the data they're providing to you is secure. Uh, without these types of reports, prospective customers and even current customers might not feel that they have the appropriate level of risk to use your services. They might believe that using your services is too risky without an independent assessment. So the key to these SOC 2 reports is that they're independent assessments performed by an independent third party validating that you have the appropriate controls in place. The SOC 2 report is important for your customers because they're using that as part of your, their vendor management programs. As part of their vendor management programs, they are required to monitor their key vendors. So when it comes to the use of SaaS companies or cloud service providers, they're usually providing that sensitive data to those vendors. To reduce that risk, they require their vendors to have SOC 2 reports on an annual basis. So when they're doing their vendor management programs, they're gonna take your SOC 2 report, they're gonna review it, and they're gonna make sure that it meets all their needs and there weren't any significant exceptions called out. Who conducts a SOC 2 audit? Um, a SOC 2 audit has to be conducted by a certified public accounting firm. Um, any of the, all of these CPA firms have to be accredited, for lack of a better term, by the AI CPA. In order to perform an attestation like a SOC 2, any CPA firm would have to be enrolled in the AI CPA's peer review program. As part of the peer review program, the AI CPA will require a peer review firm to go in and review a CPA firm's system of quality management for performing these SOC 2 reports. They're basically saying, do you have the right system in place to make sure that you're performing the audits correctly? These have to be done once every three years, and they are provided to the AI CPA as a means of monitoring the quality of SOC reports. The interesting part about SOC 2 reports is that the individual auditors don't have to be CPAs. Only the individual signing off on the report has to hold a CPA license. Um, so anybody who has the appropriate competency or knowledge to uh, audit against security controls can work on a SOC 2 audit at a CPA firm. It's just that the people supervising the audit, the people signing off on the final report, they have to possess a CPA license. How long does the process of a, for a SOC 2 type 1 How long does the SOC 2 type 1 audit process take? And how long does the SOC 2 type 2 audit process take? So the interesting part about SOC 2 audits is that it usually takes a lot longer to prepare for them and get ready than the actual audit process takes. For a SOC 2 type 1, uh, you can probably prepare in as little as you know one to three months. And the actual audit would probably take only about a week. The reason that is, is because during a type 1, the auditor is only looking at a a single day. They only have to report as of a single day, and they only need to look at the, at the design of the controls. When I say design of the controls, it is a very high level review. They're not doing a deep dive. They can get comfort uh, by looking at an example of one doing a walkthrough of the control, looking at a policy or procedure document. They don't need to do that deep dive. However, in contrast, when you're doing a SOC 2 type 2 audit, the auditor has to go much deeper. They have to look at the design and now they have to look at the operating effectiveness. And on top of that, they have to do it over a period of time, usually no less than six months uh, and usually no more than a year. So when they're doing that operating effectiveness, they're actually getting evidence over a period of time. For certain controls that require populations and samples, they're selecting random samples and getting evidence, um, specifically with onboarding, change management. They're, they're getting those populations and samples. Usually a SOC 2 type 2, I would say probably if you're going back and forth and depending on the complexity of your organization, it's probably going to take between two and four weeks for that auditor to finish and then they'll do their QC process and issue the report. How much does a SOC 2 audit cost? 
So that is a very, very subjective question. And it can vary, vary from the type of the complexity of your company and the type of auditor you're going with, whether it's a big brand name audit firm or if it's a smaller firm that doesn't have that name recognition, they usually don't charge as much, right? So for a SOC 2 type 1, I've seen as low as about 7,500, but I've also seen as high as about 30,000 for a SOC 2 type 1, and that was for a very large organization. Uh, for a SOC 2 type 2, again, I've seen as low as around 10K and seen as high as, as well into the six figures. So it really depends on a lot of factors, one being the complexity of your organization, how big is your company, how many employees do you have, how many applications might be in scope, uh, the infrastructure, all, all that plays a role into it. Uh, what's included in your audit in terms of scope? Are you doing a, any of the additional categories such as availability, processing integrity, confidentiality or privacy, uh, whether subservice organizations or third parties play a role in it, uh, whether you have global operations, so there's multiple places an auditor might have to travel to that could play into cost. Um, so all these factors play into it. Um, so hopefully that gives you kind of a, a, I know it's a wide range, but hopefully it gives you some direction on what might go into the cost for an actual audit.